Hey Avon Biology, so by now you should have answered questions 1 through 4 on Schoology and this video is going to help you answer the rest of them as well as complete our notes over Charles Darwin. Let's dive in. So evolution is change over time. We've already seen how humans have gotten more attractive over time. Even some of us can now drink milk on a regular basis without getting really upset stomachs. That is a mutation which has evolved to the species changing over time. Humans are now able to digest milk as adults, which is kind of incredible. But for a lot of animals, they continue to have this struggle for existence. If you are able to fight the good fight, then you live. But if you can't fight and maintain for yourself, then you're going to die. Now, for humans, we really don't see that very much anymore because we take care of each other. However, animals are not so altruistic. And so we end up seeing the weaker animals being meals for other stronger animals. So we talked about carrying capacities a long time ago in the fall. Uh, Environment can only sustain so many gophers. I think that's what those are. An environment can only sustain so many gophers. It only has so many shelters, so much food, so much water. There's only so many resources that it can use in order to support that life. So a population is going to grow, 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 and then eventually exceed that carrying capacity. Now, when we exceed the carrying capacity, that's when we're going to have a lot of death. So organisms are going to have to compete with each other to survive. The strongest ones survive, the weakest die out. We're fighting over food, over space, over reproductive partners, and a lot of other necessities. So if you are able to fight for food, for space, for mates, then you survive and you end up passing on your genes. If you do not survive to have enough food or space, if you can't fight or support yourself, then you die and your genes die along with you. So that is something that you should have seen in middle school. We're going to add a little bit more on top of that, and this is what's really important for the high school biology that we're going over. Notice once again, we have the star. So organisms have adaptations or inherited variations that make them a good match for their environment. So the tortoises that live on the tall plant island, they're going to have longer necks and like the kind of bell-shaped shells so that their heads can stick up high and they can get those leaves that are nice and tall. We have these adaptations. Individuals with better fitness, so they are better suited for that environment, they have a taller, longer neck to get all those leaves that are up higher, they're going to survive longer and reproduce more, and that is key. They are reproducing more because they are living longer, and therefore they are passing on more of their genes to have a nice long neck. So future generations are going to have more individuals with that well-fitted adaptation, the longer neck. So this whole concept, surviving is super important because if you can't survive, then you can't reproduce and pass down your genes. But if an organism never reproduces, then its genes stop there. Within evolution and change over time, it's all about surviving long enough to have babies. So we will end up seeing animals go through extraordinary lengths just to support their children. In whales, you will see a mother whale uh, with her calf, which is the baby whale, next to her for quite a bit of time, making sure that the whale is strong enough. We'll end up seeing like killer whales try to go after, I think this is a humpback whale right there. Actually, I don't know. But killer whales will try to attack and kill and feed on the calf, and the mom will go to extreme lengths to keep the baby safe. Rabbits. They will breastfeed their babies, make sure that the babies are growing up nice and strong and take such good care of them. And they'll end up having a ton of babies just in case if some of them get sick and die. And then I think this one's really fascinating. This is a squid. And all of these are the squid's eggs, which is kind of weird. Now, once the squid has laid her eggs, she will die. And her babies, when they hatch, will feed off of her body. She's dying, but she's dying to give her babies the best chance. So it's all about how many babies these organisms are able to have, how many times they're able to pass down their genes. This is a big adaptation. 
babies, baby squids, that have their mom's body to feed off of have more nutritional value within the first few weeks of their life and end up doing better in the long term than squids that did not die for their babies. So answer questions five and six on Schoology. Okay, so adaptations for fitness, things that are beneficial. Really, it just depends on the environment, but we can kind of classify it into a few different segments here. Uh, first, we're looking at just survival. What's going to help you make it till tomorrow so that you might be able to reproduce again? And once again, we do have a star up here. There we go, I moved the picture out of the way. So, camouflage. If you can't be seen, you can't be eaten, and so you can survive to have babies. Bright coloration. This is the opposite of camouflage. Um, some of you guys maybe have heard of poison frogs. That bright coloration is a warning sign of, hey, I'm poisonous, back off, don't eat me. Big size, the larger you are, the more you can stand your ground and keep your shelter and keep your space. Heightened senses. You might be more alert to what's going on around you so that you can keep yourself and your babies safe. And then behavior. Knowing not to eat that plant because that plant is dangerous is learned and that is a big adaptation. Those predators that look at the bright colored frog are able to realize, hey, I should not eat that. That is a great adaptation because now they're not gonna get sick and die. For reproduction. Big size is also important because that is seen as a healthy trait and makes you more attractive to the opposite sex there. Costly structures like a peacock's tail flaunts that you have a lot of um, nutritional value and that you are safe and healthy enough that you can afford having a big tail, which is kind of odd and similar to humans and how we flaunt our wealth. And behavior again, uh, we end up seeing humans behaving in certain ways in order to get the attention of somebody that they might like. Uh, but we also see that within animals too. Birds have certain songs that they sing to attract the opposite sex. So behavior, all of this stuff is there to help an organism reproduce more. All of these survival things are very helpful, but if the organism is not reproducing, it really doesn't matter. It's all about passing down the genes. How many genes did you pass down and are your genes beneficial for the environment or that species? Adaptations are traits that are beneficial for an environment. So it increases the fitness, whether that animal is going to survive a little bit longer to possibly have children. Uh, the first type that I think we've already talked about and you guys should be familiar with is camouflage, meaning that an organism is going to be able to blend in better to their environment so that predators or other things that could do it harm are not going to be able to seek it out and eat it as easily. Uh, this is a sea dragon, and you might notice that it looks a lot like the uh, surrounding plants under sea for it. Um, it's able to blend in really well, and this is a great camouflage tactic for it. Bigger fish are not going to be able to spot the sea dragon from the kelp, I think, as easily, and so it's not going to be as easy of a target. And then there's also something called mimicry, and this is not something that is as... Um, natural or as common as we typically think of when it comes to like camouflage. It's like, duh, camouflage works. Mimicry is when you have one organism that is dangerous and looks a certain way. So another organism is going to look like it so that people will not go after it or predators will not go after it. So for example, we have a cuckoo bee and a yellow jacket. So yellow jackets are mean. Uh, chances are you've probably been stung by a yellow jacket before and thought it was a bee. So bees characteristically have that black and uh, yellow stripes. Yellow jackets and bees and all of these other organisms have worked together to look like this so that we in general know to avoid anything that is black with yellow stripes. So let's look at some examples together. This is a crab. 
and it has a massive claw. And this big size of the claw is a big adaptation for the crab. It's going to be able to crack open more shells to get more food. And if it comes across any other crabs that are territorial, it's going to have a better advantage at taking down the other crab with its massive claw so that it can destroy it. It's like having a big strong arm that you can use to punch down the other dudes. The bright coloration in this poison dart frog, um, animals that are predators to frogs have recognized this as dangerous. And so we have two adaptations here. There's one for the coloration of that color is dangerous. And then there's another one for recognizing that that color is dangerous. We have another frog that is camouflaged here. Let's see if you can find it. <laughs> Here's the head, here's the body, and then we've got the right leg and the left leg over there, and that's the front right leg. So this frog is really well camouflaged among the leaves on the ground, and that's going to allow it to evade any predators. The big, beautiful peacock. Um, this tail is not there to help it survive at all. In fact, that tail could make it easier to catch by any predators. What that tail does do, though, is tell the lady peacocks, hey, I am healthy enough that I can flaunt all of this, which means that I am a great specimen to mate with. And finally, we have an elephant seal. They're not cute but they do like to sing a song that attracts the ladies. So these elephant seals will have songs that they sing just like a lot of other birds. And that is a mating call to allow the ladies to know, oh, hey, this male is looking for a mate. And so that is a behavior adaptation that is going to increase the reproductive prowess of these organisms to then pass on their genes. So pause this and go ahead and answer question seven. All right, guys. That is it for today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. Um, and I hope that things are going well and everyone is healthy at home. Bye and have a great day, Avon Biology Department.